The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very happy to have you here along with us, along for the ride. We're going to get to all kinds of fun stuff, talking about uh, starting off with UFC 298, recapping what happened and kind of giving our review on the fights and everything that happened this past weekend. And another thing that happened this past weekend was NBA All-Star Weekend. I do think that the NBA may be one of the best, if not the best, in the way that they do their All-Star Weekend. I think they had a really fun All-Star Weekend overall. Um, we're going to talk about all of that, though. Um, so obviously stick around with us. Before we get too far into it, I want to first remind everybody to hit that like button on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube and hit that subscribe button as well. If you want to help us out and help support the show a little further, you can join the, the membership program here on YouTube. You can click that link down in the description to go and join our channel and become a member today. We are going to do stuff like giveaways. Uh, you get early access to all of our videos, so you get it as soon as it's uploaded, whereas other people have to wait till 8.30 the next day. So you get that, that kind of privilege. And then uh, we're also going to do s some extra behind the scenes exclusive stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of things in the works. The more that you guys are able to support us the more that we're able to give back to you guys uh, we want to do a lot of extra things there's things that take money that we don't usually do because you know we've got our day jobs so if we're able to take some time away from our day jobs to kind of compensate for that then we want to give you guys more more support so if you want to do that otherwise you can also go to rising2.com shop and you can look at our merch we've got all kinds of fun merch we put some kansas city chiefs merch up there uh, we've got some other team merch and stuff like that and then we've also just got rising to the occasion merch so go check that out too guys we thank you all so much for all of the support we've gotten so far but another great way if you don't if you don't have the money to give us uh to, to help support the show you can just hit that like button or give us a five-star review on apple podcast or spotify wherever you listen but Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to bring in my co-host, Jeremy. Jeremy, how are you doing this fine Monday evening? I'm doing pretty good. Then It feels like it's been a long day, and it's only Monday to begin with. But, I mean, going over what you just obviously mentioned for what we got on the schedule for tonight, talking about UFC 298, going to the what I thought was going to be a little more exciting prelim fights. It, it, to me, it didn't <laughs> live up truly to the hype. I was, no, not much. It was almost kind of like a snooze fest a little bit to me, honestly. But, I mean, let's let's start there. I mean, yeah, might as well just go get so, rolling with it. Yeah, I mean, go, going through those, uh, I mean, man, I, I was kind of looking towards some of these prelims, or these early prelims, uh, and our cousin uh, Dylan was out watching them with me. Uh, it, we, we thought we were kind of looking through these. Uh, so first of all, the Maverick fight, uh, the Maverick versus um, Andrea Lee, that one, I thought that one was going to be a lot more fun. The way that they walked out, uh, mm -hmm. the way that, you know, that that everything was looking for these two girls coming into this fight. It seemed like an underdog having her time to shine and really taking the stage. And it was just weird to me that she, you know, it, it, it didn't really seem like that aggressive of a fight. Uh, and then yeah. you go on to the next one where uh, it was Val Woodburn against Oban Elliott. Uh, and that one was another one where it just felt like two guys that didn't really want to be there, two guys that didn't really want to put on a show, weren't really invested in, in winning the fight. It just it felt like just one after another, and it felt like a lot of them in the early prelims and the prelims that just weren't a whole lot of fun. I don't think it was really until uh, later on in the night whenever we saw uh, it was the, the Quinlan against Danny Barlow. That was the first knockout that we saw. Uh, yeah. and that one, that one was quite a bit, quite a bit of a, a excitement because there were so many times where he kept on hitting, uh, you know, Barlow kept on hitting Quinlan, and he kept on letting him have it. And Quinlan dropped to the ground, bounced back up, dropped to the ground, bounced back up to the point where he's like facing the wrong direction, and the referee had to hurry up and come in and stop it. So that yeah. was the first excitement that I felt like we got. And then the first uh, match right after that, another fun one uh, between uh, Ribeiro and Ming Yang. Uh, so that one was fun. I didn't really know too much about those two fighters, so that was kind of fun getting to know two new fighters for me. Um, but, you know, just overall, just not a lot of excitement until you really got to the main event. Uh, I even felt like the Amanda Lemos against Mackenzie Dern wasn't as exciting as I was hoping it would be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just all throughout the prelims, it, it felt like it wasn't until that main card hit that there was actual excitement um, starting off. And, and let's go ahead and hit this one first. We had Anthony Hernandez. I thought that was a really fun one. Uh, I guess before we get to that, there was one of the, the prelims that we talked about that I want to give a huge shout out to it was to Junior Taffa because Junior Taffa, his brother Justin Taffa was supposed to fight. And the day before, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, the day before when they did the weigh-ins, his brother announced that he was injured, wasn't gonna be gonna be able to make the fight. So his brother stepped up 
and took his place with really no preparation. I don't know how much preparation Junior would have gotten. Uh, I can't imagine much at all. He might have been there during the camps, but we talked about that, man. That is a total warrior move. And he stepped out. He looked pretty good He for, for as little preparation as he had. He looked pretty good. Uh, he just didn't have the knowledge or maybe he just didn't feel comfortable to switch into Southpaw when he needed to mm-hmm. and just kept on getting that front leg smashed. I think it was his oh, left man. leg. And finally, finally looked like he must have broke his leg. Something happened where he couldn't put any weight on it at all. Uh, and the ref just had to call it, you know, cause it was like, yeah, the, you, you can't keep on fighting like this. Yeah. So, but still hats off to him because De Lima is not an easy fighter to go against, especially coming in with that short of notice. So that's that's an amazing story. I loved it. I was rooting really hard for Junior, and you could hear the whole stadium, come on, Tafa, Tafa, or either mm-hmm. that or they were yelling Junior. Uh, one yeah, of the two, I can't remember. But yeah, just just really fun stuff. I mean, Jeremy, you and I, you know, you, me, and Blake, all three talked about that one. Uh, total warrior move, and hats off to the guy for even stepping oh, in with that short of notice. Oh, yeah. First things first, before I start talking about it, my hats is off to you, dude, because that takes a lot of courage and guts to just step in with very very short time to get trained and everything is like you said we see these fighters train for months upon months just to get their 15 minutes of fame in this situation and junior he if i had to guess well this would have been 24 hours three rounds is this, I'm trying to think. Am I, am three I rounds, of, five, three rounds, rounds of, five of five or five? Uh, yeah, three rounds of five. Yeah, because right, the main's sorry. five rounds of three. Uh, yeah, the, when you're when you're going into a title fight, it's five rounds of five. So yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. I, I I kept on getting it mixed up last show too, where I, I couldn't couldn't get my brain on the on the right timing. But yeah, you had it right. Fifteen minutes of fame. Yeah, I mean, but like if you look at like the total strike counts, like for a non-trained fighter. Tafa still landed 17 for 33, a little over 50%. So I'll give him credit for that. And, of course, you look on the other side. Uh, Lima threw 80% through 63 to 78 for that perspective. And you knew he wasn't going to be like a technical fighter and try and shoot for takedowns. Or um, you obviously knew the significance like for strike ability was definitely going to be obviously one-sided in that situation. Like – Lima had 71% and uh, Tafa only had 40%, but that's besides the point. I I was one of those people where I was really, really hoping that there could be a monumental upset. Like, I wouldn't even care. Obviously, this isn't the main card fight, but yeah. if, this were to, if this were to be an upset, it would be the talk of the UFC for ever to say man, we, we were we were yelling for him you know because after finding oh, yeah. that out about him i mean just man that's that's exciting you know and then, yeah and you could tell the crowd was just like it, it's it's not even any any disrespect to de lima it's just no, the fact no, that no, man no, no, like no. that's that deserves some respect and honestly oh, 100 if 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 he loses nobody's gonna sit there and boo at him for losing uh no. you know it's just you you did what you could and even to de lima good job man you, you still won the fight so still props to you for your win but let's go over to the other one, the one that you brought up whenever we were talking about this in a, a preview. Um, it, it, it was kind of funny because it wasn't really totally on my radar, but it was definitely a fight that I thought would be a good one um, between Anthony Hernandez and Roman Kopilov. And this was a fight that going into it, you, you were talking about it. These two guys, I mean, we, we, we mentioned how much, how similar they were. Um, and of course, we were kind of leaning towards Anthony Hernandez. Not only was it a good fight, we saw Anthony Hernandez able to get him, get, get Kapilov into a submission and mm-hmm. win the fight, but Anthony Hernandez actually ended up earning the performance of the night based on you know the, from the UFC. So that was really cool to see, uh, and just it, that was probably one of the first big time fun fights to watch of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Anthony Hernandez, a really good fight, uh, a really good win over su- in submission in round two. I think there was uh, three twenty three. And into round two, so just a really good fight by him. Uh, ultimately, Kapilov came out with a good game plan, just couldn't couldn't stand up to Anthony Hernandez, and so ends up losing that fight. I mean, once you throw, if you look at the strike comparisons, if you throw thirty nine for eighty two for strikes, and that was how much Anthony Hernandez threw, I was thinking this is not going to be good, just because you look at Kapilov, he threw forty one for sixty three, and I'm thinking you have that significancy of more strikes, but take it for granted. We, you look at Anthony Hernandez, he, he can 
be really lethal in these submission type maneuvers. And that's one big crucial aspect that he was able to take in the fight. And looking at the overall outcome, like you said, he won the second round with 323 left in the second round. Yeah, I mean, it, when, when you when you look at the stats, what, what surprised me, the reason why I didn't feel like uh, Kapilov was ever out of it was because obviously he brought up the total strikes. He he had more total strikes. He had one more significant strike, 35 mm -hmm. to 34 in significant strikes in favor of Kapilov. Yeah. So I, I, that was one thing that I thought it looked like a really good fight. But the thing that that really turned this into uh, Anthony Hernandez's fight was the takedowns. He, he got him down three times and all three mm -hmm. times he was owning it on the ground yeah. and got him into two different, uh, you know, kind of submission attempts, finally got it sunk in on that second one. And it, it was obvious too, as it, cause the first one, you could tell it was still up on the chin. He was yeah, barely get getting, getting himself blow. out of there. But then as soon as he sunk underneath there, it was over and Done. you knew it. Game you over. just, you, you knew that he got that, that mm -hmm. arm right up underneath the chin. It was, it was a, a beautiful ending. Oh yeah. So yeah, just a, a really good overall fight. Uh, and, and like I said, when you know that that's that's the way you can win, that's just what you've got to do. But uh, going on to the next fight right after that one that we were talking about, Blake and I were really excited to see Henry Cejudo uh, come back in. He's a great fighter. He had three years off. Let's remember that. Yeah. Three years off. And that he comes no back walk. in. And he's going against a, a good dude, too, because uh, Mirab uh, Dwalashwali. Uh, or Dwala Shwili, I think is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I think they pronounce the V as a W. Um, so just overall, he's a he's a really good fighter. And I didn't realize that as much as when I saw him against Cejudo because Cejudo came out swinging. He looked like he used all of his energy in that first round. Uh, he did end up kind of gassing out in the second round. It seems like towards the middle of the second round, he just didn't have anything left in him. But Cejudo wanted to get him on the ground, wanted him, wanted to work him on the ground, and did a really good job on the ground overall until that second, midway through that second round. Uh, ultimately, uh, Marab ended up having a, just a much better fight. I mean, just it, it, everything, every time that they would stand up, Marab would just have a, a much better striking uh, ability. He was much more precise with, with the hits that he was taking. Really mm -hmm. good at counter shots, too. Uh, and so just overall... He, he did a great job, uh, and, and the, the the shocking thing about this, so uh, Cejudo, Henry Cejudo is a, an Olympic wrestler, so that's, that's one thing about him that you would expect him to be really good wrestling, and he did pretty good on the ground. I do think yeah, he, he got did. down, and he was able to reverse a lot, but what what kind of surprised me was that Marab was taking him down so much. I think he took him down four or five times At throughout least, the round. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it was just really shocking to see that because you would think with as good of a striker as he is, keep him up on the feet. Um, but obviously, the, the, when you look at the numbers, the decision was right. It just wasn't Cejudo's night. Uh, he couldn't quite get uh, he couldn't get Marab into some sort of su submission into some kind of hold where he could he could get him to tap. So, um, you know, uh, obviously, Marab uh, ends up winning the fight in a really good, really good fight. Uh, that was even though this one went to the decision. Usually, decision fights aren't as exciting. This is yeah. one of the exceptions. I think this was a really fun one to watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, I, I'm in the same boat. If you get into that situation where you make it through all three rounds and you have to make a decision factor, you usually see those fights to where it's an average fight, to where it's nothing like nothing like throwing complete mind-boggling switch maneuvers or just completely monstering takedowns. But, Josh, I want to throw something out here. Like you said, Morab has been off for how long? Three uh, years? No, uh, uh, Cejudo. Or, Cejudo, uh, yeah, Cejudo off for was three off for years. three years. For still being off for three years, do you, can you take a guess on how many overall overall strikes that he took? Uh, he took a lot. I know I was looking at the, the numbers earlier. I mean, he he took like 100, 100 some strikes total. Didn't yeah, he, he not, landed not 54 for 106 strikes. Yeah. Now, if you were to say, I just threw 54 punches that connected out well, of Well, that's how many he strikes. threw? Yeah. Okay, he, I thought you meant shows, how many he received because I think uh, I think he received like a hundred and some, didn't he? Like yeah, 117. He, like a hundred and fifteen, hundred seventeen, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so I mean he, he took a lot of hits. But yeah. the fact that he was able to even take a lot of hits yeah. and keep himself in this fight, because even down to the last the last round, you still didn't know for sure. Like it still seemed no, like it was Cejudo might even. might still have a chance and yeah. we were all rooting for him. I mean, then you look on the other side for Murat. Total strikes, he threw 167 for 273. I mean, if you were to say that I just faced that many strikes and I've been off for three years, I would have said you're full of it. 
And being able to have the momentum and capability that he kept over those three years, that's what truly mind boggled me because I'm thinking, I understand you're still going to be training and you're still going to be keeping yourself active and keeping yourself fit. I, I truly crap you not. I, I thought it was really going to go to Henry here, but I mean, overall look at the overall outcome for just the overall fight. I, I thought that maybe he can get lucky in this type of decision, but obviously being a decision to a decision to who wins the fight. But at the end of the day, it was just coming down to who can keep that momentum going. And it, it like you said, it was pretty even going into round three, but I mean, at the end of the day, it just, it just didn't fall the way that it went for Henry. So still my congrats and hats off to him for, being out for three years and coming back yeah. in the UFC and doing it. I and, and Dana White even said afterwards, you know, how, how surprised he was and how good he looked. And obviously yeah. he gassed out towards round two. And it, it was, it was a really good fight. He did, he did a phenomenal job for being off that long. That's, that's not ever a good thing for an MMA fighter to take that long of a time off. That's why I wonder with Israel Adesanya, because he's supposed to be off for a while. I kind of mm-hmm. wonder how, how hot he's going to come back into it. You yeah, know, there's, sure. there's several fighters like that, you know, uh, I think that's why Conor McGregor slowed down so much, you know, the way that he did was because he took so much time off of fighting. And it's it's not that there's not they're not trying to still keep themselves trained and keep them in it. They haven't been in the octagon. octagon. They haven't felt that pressure that mm-hmm. you get from going in. But yeah. that was a really good one. Um, another one that guy has a little bit of time off and uh, didn't do so well was Ian M- M- Ian Mikado Gary. Uh Ian Gary, uh, if if Blake was here, you, do you know what he would call him? You had it close, I think. I was gonna say bum, but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe either a bum or just I, I feel like you just a chump. come on here and rip him for being booty cheeks. <laughs> there <But. laughs> we go. <laughs> no, I mean uh, it, it, he was, was. I, this whole fight. I was really this disappointed. Was, this was one where it felt like Jeff Neal didn't press as much. No, but the entire the entire fight was on their feet. The entire fight, nobody got a knockdown. The no. entire fight, Ian Gary just kept on looking like a little wuss and didn't want to get hit. Don't sit here and talk all this trash, and then come in here and look like trash. You know, I I, I just I can't stand it. The, no. the reason why we can get behind Conor McGregor he is because talk he, talk. he talk he talks the talk a lot, but he backs himself up. Even when he loses, he still doesn't shy away from a punch. He still doesn't shy away from somebody shooting in on him. He still doesn't shy away from trying to knock somebody out. I didn't see one single haymaker from Ian Gary the entire the entire fight. He won uh, based on total strikes. That was it, and it was a split decision. It was a split decision because you both looked like garbage in the, mm-hmm. in the octagon. This didn't even deserve to be on the main card for as boring no. as this was. This was probably worse than all the other early prelims that we talked about. Yeah. To me – if I had to watch this fight again, I would just sincerely shut the TV off just because if you go into that, if you go into that kind of atmosphere, you would think all gloves are off. I'm going to throw everything at him and try and make him look like a goon. But if you, if you come into that fight and talk, you talk, you need to walk it and say, this is my ring. And you're going to see why I say that. But literally, they're just prancing around, just looking like they sincerely didn't even want to be there. But I, I 100% agree. This should have not been on on the card at all. Not not a main card. It, it needs no, to be. No, no. Put a, it on a, a prelim. Prelim. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can give it prelims because it is a big name like Ian Gary. I understand that, but still, if you're going to perform like that, get out of here, dude. Yeah, like, and, and he, he wants to sit there and call out Colby Covington. You, you can't call dudes out when you yeah. fight like that. I mean, he, I don't like Colby. I would love to see you tear Colby apart, but you don't. You don't have the right to call anybody out. No. So you, just sit your ass down. I don't. I don't want to see it. Um, Robert Whitaker. I, I do think I, I want. I want to give him a, a little bit of a shout out. I think he play, mm-hmm. he fought very well against Paulo Costa. Uh, Costa looked good too. This is this was just, this, was just, this is another one that goes the the full distance, and it's just a tough fight because they went all three rounds, both looking really good. Uh, and it came down to a decision, and it, and, and it ends up going over to uh, really unanimous decision by Robert Whitaker. He looked better the entire mm-hmm. fight. I felt like he had better defense. I feel like right. he found his his areas. He was he had a lot of really good counter strikes too. So uh, hats off to him winning that one. But let's jump to the main event. 
uh, the event that we had all been waiting for. We talked about this one. It could swing either way. It really could because Tapuria is such a contender. He deserves this shot 100%. And uh, he also got a performance of the night from the UFC. Uh, he had an amazing fight because he started off. It just seemed like he was being very very selective. He was he was trying to feel out. And then we talked about that too. I, I, I predicted that first round was going to be both guys feeling each other out. I thought Alexander Volkanovsky would have came out uh, swinging really hard in the second. And I think he did um, yeah. because in the second round he came out. And what I thought was crazy, props to Michael Bisping because he called it. He said he's 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 striking really well, but he's got to he's got to be be careful uh, of, of that over the top. And as soon as he said that, probably three seconds later, uh, all of a sudden Ilya Tapuria comes over the top and gets him really good. Uh, and then he's able to st- step back uh, and he's able to to sit there and just keep on boxing with him and keep him on his feet, which is something that you don't really want to do with Volkanovski. But Tapuria is that kind of a fighter too. They have such a similar fighting style. It was so much fun to watch. Uh, and man, Taporia, uh, he, he came out and, and he fought the better fight. He, he really didn't look as good as Volkanovsky. I think Volkanovsky looked better, but he but, ended up knocking him down. Uh, and, and as soon as he got that, I think it was a left, a left hand that he yeah, got in there. Love jab, and as soon as he connected something. with it, dropped him on the mat. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't see it at first and, and fast, you know, in regular time, I was like, why are you calling so it that quick? That yeah. was that was such a quick call, but hats off to the ref because I mean he was at a better angle than I was on the TV. But hats off to the ref because he stepped in right away. Who and was it, it was it was obvious he was out because as soon as he connected when Tapuria connected with that left hand, he was stiff. Lights were out, and, and you yeah. could tell he was sleeping. Do you uh, and, and who even Volkanovski, Volkanovski had a very good uh, uh, very good mindset about it afterwards. He was he was given props to Taporia for winning and uh, Taporia, really good sportsmanship between the two. And I love to see that afterwards. And even beforehand, you saw that a little bit. Uh, Taporia told him, he said, Hey, listen, I respect you and I respect you as a professional, you as, and, and what you've done for this sport and the, what you've been able to do. I just want to take it from you. And mm-hmm. that's total professionalism. And that's Absolutely. exactly the way, the way it should be. Uh, and, and honestly, a lot of the times behind the, behind the scenes, guys like McGregor, or uh, you know, John Jones, or if you think of some of the trash talkers, Nate Diaz might be one of the few that doesn't have that professional <laughs> mindset to it. But he just wants to knock you out. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love that. And and they acted professional afterwards, very very professional towards each other. And so I love to see it. Taporia, your new featherweight champion, uh, and, and I thought it was a really good fight from him. I I didn't expect him to get it done in the second round. We talked third round for Taporia for uh, Volkanovski to win, but instead Taporia ends up knocking Volk out, and it was a really good fight. Absolutely. And this is why I don't sports bet, because in this situation, I would have been really upset. But, um, you know, I, I had a, a free bet, a bonus bet. Uh, I think it was a $10 bonus bet that I used, made up a, a nice little six legger. And I lost one. And it was this one. Really? Uh, I, I picked, what was it? I think I picked over, over two and a half rounds, if I remember right. Because I wasn't sure on the, we, we talked about that. We, we were all picking Volkanovsky. In the round three, yeah, uh, it was gonna go either way. Um, yeah. yeah, we all we all talked about probably probably uh, you know over in, into the third round. So it was either over three rounds, which means any time in the third round would have been fine, or it was two and a half, something like that. So right, uh, you know, so I I kind of lost that one because I think I I think I whatever I bet was just barely missed on that one. But yeah, it was it was a close one. But at least oh, yeah. it was a bonus. Do you do you know or do you even remember who the the ref was for the main fight? I don't. I don't recall who it was. I don't think I recognized this ref. Um, no, but... I, I didn't recognize him either. But I didn't know if you happened to know him or even heard of the guy. But I mean, no. no I didn't. Vol- Volkanovsky. I was. I was truly shocked for when I, when I saw Volkanovsky lose, just because of the significant laying that that Taporia was giving to him and. That's another big thing that I will have to tip my hat to just because it's one thing to want to go into the octagon and you look across at your opponent and you just think one thing. I want to kick his head off. But it's another thing to where, like you said, I respect you as an individual. I respect you as a fighter and I respect what you're doing. To me, that's what you call a grade A class act. And that's just sportsmanship. And you can, you can do all you want in the arena. You can beat the living daylights out of each other, but that medium moment when you walk out of the ring and walk into the locker room, you're, 
your significant friends. Now, going back to the fight, obviously for Volkanovski, he, he threw 47 for a little over 100. Then for uh, Tapori, he threw 36 for 78. Now, this was another one of those fights to where I thought it was going to be getting going right out of the get-go. I think and, you had that one the other way around. Uh, total strikes, 36 strikes for Taporian, 47 Oh, yeah, I did, I did say that backwards. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that I thought was so shocking. And, and almost really, almost every single one of their connections were significant strikes. Significant. They were counted as significant strikes. Yeah. Uh, there, was, there was one by Taporia that was not counted as significant strike. Well, that's, it should have been. That's impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, just... Yeah, I mean, looking looking at at their overall strike count, that's that's what was so shocking about this fight is that you lost in the total strikes, but you found but, a way to make your you know a couple of good connections there at the yeah. end, and and really that one that knocked him out. Uh, he had another one where he he followed through. The uppercut but, and the follow yeah, just through. A, a really good fight by Taporia, and, and uh, mm-hmm. like like we all like we all said, uh, it could go either way, but you just got to lean towards Volk, uh, and it's probably biasism that that kept us from from picking Probably. against Volkanovsky. I just had a gut feeling like it was going to come down to this. And, and Dylan and I were talking down in the Sasquatch cave about that. Just, it just seems, it feels like it's going to be an upset. Uh, and I just couldn't pull myself to put the money against Volk though. Uh, well, I, I, I mean, couldn't do it. It was the same situation for when we were walking the Dragos Duplessis fight for, um, against, um, Strickland. Yeah. Or, I mean, you'd look at that. We were yeah, I mean, all I, thinking, I, I, well, that one was just. I felt like I really liked Drakus Duplessis, and I wanted to take him. I wanted to. I wanted to pick him to win, but he just didn't look good enough. That was that no. was the thing with that one. But this one just felt like I, I feel so. I felt like Taporia was a very deserving challenger. Um, it's just that, yeah, man. I just I just like Volk too much. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I think I was just too. I think biased. we're just all on the bandwagon. I, I, well, I was just too biased. Uh, I would say the bandwagon probably would have gone towards towards Taporia. I think that the that he was more True. of the fan favorite going into that yeah. just because he was this rising new star and he could take down the dynasty. And everyone yeah. likes to see the change of the dynasty. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't like to see it in this case so much because I loved the dynasty that Volk was putting together. Yeah. But still, great fight by both. And and I'm sure Volk will have his chance again. I'm, oh, I'm sure 100%. it won't go too long before it he gets be his long. chance. Yeah. So just really, really fun UFC 298. Um, let's jump over to UFC 300 because we found out who the main event will be. And it's going to be the light heavyweight title bout between Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. Uh, I'm not disappointed that you picked these guys to go to UFC 300. I'm just disappointed that they're the main event. Mm-hmm. Uh, this we were all counting down. And there all the rumors about it could be McGregor and Chandler, or McGregor and Diaz, or McGregor and anybody. For goodness sakes, yeah, exactly. Uh, that all of the hype about about who it could have been, and there's there was several other names that got thrown in there that were like, man, that would be really cool. Drakus Duplessis fighting against uh, you know somebody, giving giving somebody else a chance at at the the belt there, or maybe uh, maybe. Didn't Sugar Sean even get mentioned too? He got mentioned, but there's no way, and and I don't think there's any way that he's going to turn around from 299 right to 300. True. That's True. kind of crazy to think that's, that, and that, that's, that's a, a really turnaround. quick turnaround. Yeah, because they're not even a month apart. I don't think not a full month. No. So, I, I mean, just looking looking at it, there was so many names that got brought up that could be in it, and you go with Alex Pereira. I mean, he, he's a good fighter. Um, it, it, Alex Pereira is a known name in the UFC. He's a, he's a, you know, the, the light heavyweight title, uh, you know, he's, he's the champion and Jamal Hill, uh, who is having a really good UFC, uh, you know, UFC career so far, 12 and one right now looks really good. Uh, I'm just, I'm just not excited about this fight. It's no, no, no shade thrown towards these guys. I'm, I'm really glad that they get a big time of a uh, stage. I'm just hoping that if you're going to get this big of a stage, you better make it worth my money. Mm-hmm. Because I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stoked about this, and I would almost not even really care to watch it because Justin Gaethje against Max Holloway, I think that's going to be a fun one. Uh, honestly, the the uh, the stra- straw weight uh, title bout between uh, Zhang Weili uh, and uh, I don't even know how to say the Chinese uh, lady that she's going <laughs> against. I don't know how to say her name, but uh, that fight could be really exciting. Zhang Weili is a very aggressive fighter, so yeah. I will say that that could be an ex- an exciting woman fight. 
uh, Charles, Char- Charles Oliveira, I think that's going to be a fun fight. Um, looking through, I mean, Aljamain Al- Al- Sterling, Sterling, I suppose fight. he's, he's yeah. another, another guy that we like to watch. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm just looking through Holly Holm making a, a return here. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just I'm not seeing a whole lot of you deserve UFC 300 because for those who don't understand UFC events and how they work, UFC 100, UFC 200 were big time events because you reached a, a century milestone. Now you get to 300, and I just don't feel like it's it's got that grab to it like a Chuck Liddell fighting in it, you know. And so I just I don't know. I mean, it, it, am I wrong for for thinking that this is just not a UFC 300 kind of feeling fight. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, once once I finally had the opportunity to look and see who was going to be on the card just in general for UFC 300, this is UFC 300 we're talking about here. You have on a monumental stage out in Vegas, T-Mobile Arena, all the stakes you're going to be going in. I was going to ask you earlier, you were talking money, if you were going to make some make some Vegas puns. But, I mean, obviously what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And this is definitely one where I wish it wouldn't have stayed in Vegas just because, in my eyes, this is not what I, I pictured UFC 300 to be. I, I will uh, defend it by saying Dana White knows what he's doing. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I, I yeah. respect Dana as a businessman and as a commissioner of, of – probably the greatest commissioner of any league is Dana White. So mm-hmm. I will say Dana knows what he's doing. So maybe, and, and obviously there's, there's obviously some things going on in the, in behind the scenes with right. McGregor, McGregor and Chandler and, and whoever everybody. else they were talking to. I don't know who yeah. he was even talking to. He made it pretty clear. And, and, and it just seemed like McGregor is too far of a stretch. I just thought maybe he was like trying to sell that it's not. And then all of a sudden surprise everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what I was hoping for. But it seems like he was never actually in talks with McGregor about coming to this. Uh, And whoever he was talking to behind the scenes, it was obviously difficult to get the guys that he wanted to get um, because it it shouldn't have taken this long. He thought he was going to have it a week after 297. So, you know, that that tells you something. So it just, you know, overall, I will say Dana knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, and so I, I will give him the benefit of, the benefit of the doubt uh, and say that he knows what he's what he's doing. And so he's going to bring the heat when it comes to UFC 300. Mm-hmm. But what else brings the heat is what you have to cook in the kitchen each night. And let me know, let me tell you what there's nothing more painful. There's nothing more annoying than having to come home and prep. Maybe you don't even have groceries at the store, so you've got to run to the grocery store, go pick up some food, come home, prep it all up. You have to cook it. And then whenever you're done cooking, Gotta not only did away. you spend all that energy at work all day, not only did you spend all that energy cooking, now you've got to clean it up. Well, guess what? With Factors Delicious Ready to Eat Meals, they make eating better every day very easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, you can be ready with prepared chef-crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You heard that right. They deliver them in a box right at your doorstep and they are cold and fresh and Mm -hmm. very good delicious meals with over 35 different options to choose from each week including keto calorie smart vegan and veggie and so much more and there's even so much more to enjoy with 55 nutrition packed add-ons to help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious so what are you waiting for get started today and have a feel good week of meals ready to go Factor is absolutely delicious. We love it. We have used it for quite some time now, and they have absolutely saved me from having to eat out every night because I work on the road a lot. A lot of times, I'm sure you guys, if you watch the show often, you see me in a hotel room. I've got to go out to eat, and I hate that. Instead, Factor makes it very easy because two-minute meals, uh, you can fuel up really fast with their restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat up and eat wherever you are at. So I pack them in a cooler pop a couple of of holes in it, pop it in the microwave for two minutes. That's all it takes, two minutes. And then you strip it off, you eat it, and it's easy to clean up because you just fold that up and throw it away. It's it's such an easy cleanup. It does not taste like an... Uh, you know, like a little a TV frozen dinner, dinner, a little no. TV dinner. It is delicious. It is absolutely amazing. Not only that, but they have snacks, smoothies, and so much more. Uh, and guess what? Like I mentioned, not having to eat out. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. And every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious. And let me reemphasize, 
delicious. It is absolutely wonderful. Not only that, but it's also very flexible to your schedule because uh, you can get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime you go to factor uh, and, and, and just pause it. If you don't want any next, the next week, whatever the case may be, they're so flexible with your schedule. And so that's one thing that I absolutely love about factor. So you can head to factormeals.com slash rising 250 and use that code rising 250 and get 50% off your first first box plus two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active that's code rising 250 r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o-5-0 at factormeals.com slash r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o-5-0 and get 50 percent off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active so just keep that subscription active and you get two free wellness shots every box that comes in the mail amazing deal guys don't miss out on it go to go to factormeals.com slash rising 250 and use that code rising 250 or 50% off and those two free wellness shots per box while the subscription is active. But let's get into the action of NBA All-Star Week because it was a, it was a great NBA All-Star Week. And like I said, I I, I know it may, may be a hot take. I think the NBA does the best job with their All-Star Weekend. I, I could say that maybe the MLB is pretty close. Uh, I'm not really hot on the NFL and what they do. The NHL could use some. It can use some, some upgrades. Yeah, it could use some upgrades. Something I don't know. I just there's something about the All Star Game just in general that doesn't do it for me. I do like the Skills Challenge quite a bit for the NHL, but NBA. Really, I go down the list and I I, I like just about all of it. Um, let's start off with the one that uh, you and I were talking about before starting the show. Sabrina versus Steph. This was one that we were looking forward to. We were excited. We talked about it, uh, and Sabrina out from the NBA three-point line doesn't even stand a chance but she did really good uh what did she put up 26 20 uh 26 20 25 or 26 and steph ended up beating her just barely uh and and he beat her by a couple of points uh, i i should have looked up the points and, and made sure i had those down i'm looking it up right now all right yeah because i mean it was it was very impressive sabrina started she put the heat on steph because she drained i think out of her first 10 i think she drained nine out of ten on her first 10 shots a really good shooting from her. So she she surprised everybody. Not only that, but she did step back to the NBA three. So, man, props given to her for that because that is incredibly impressive. impressive. <laughs> and, you know, everyone wants to make a big deal about us mentioning that. The commentators there said, man, she should have shot from the, the women's three. They're saying that because she did so good. She would have whooped Steph if she stepped in where she usually shoots from. So, I mean, it's just saying that's where she's used to shooting. She obviously practiced at the NBA three and was was ready to go out there. Uh, so that was one thing, man. I just I, I think she shot lights out. Steph had to make the, the last to couple of buckets in order for it to count. Uh, and then on top of that, when you go over to the men's three point challenge, Damian Lillard is the one that won. She beat him by like two or three points. So yeah. Yeah, hats off to you. I don't care if you were using a women's ball or not. That is impressive. Stepping another step back to the NBA three point line and doing that hats off to you, Sabrina. Uh, I loved to watch it. It was a lot of fun. I think they did an amazing job with the marketing on this. They didn't press the whole women versus men or anything like that. They just made it a competition uh, and, and put it out there for everyone to watch. And it was so much fun. Uh, and so I, I, I do think that they should bring this one back. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe not always Sabrina and Steph, uh, maybe bring in, you know, some some other WNBA players. Let us let us get to know the ones that we don't know because I think most people, even if you don't watch the WNBA, you know you know a name like Sabrina Ionescu, uh, mainly just because of what she did in college. So, you know, maybe maybe bring a, a, another name that we don't know just so we can learn them, or maybe maybe let them kind of integrate into a couple of other challenges like this too. I think it was a lot of fun. Absolutely, and the, if I had to honestly and sincerely say this is my favorite event that happened in, during all-star weekend but yeah me too to, to look up the score like you mentioned it was 29 to 26 yeah that's what i thought it was like by uh he by made three. a bucket and then he drained his last uh because he, he saved ball. his money shots for last and that was mm -hmm. obviously where he pulled ahead yeah absolutely but looking at this this is truly i thought it was unbelievable for what she was able to do like don't get me wrong we all knew before going into this competition she was an unbelievable shooter but then you go on to the bright lights in the NBA stage and having all the pressure around you. I mean, take it for granted in the WNBA, you still have that pressure in the lights, but this is just a complete different atmosphere coming from the NBA to the WNBA. Now, 
I want I want your opinion on this, Josh. I don't know if you caught this. They were mentioning a possibility, or at least throwing the idea out there, for potentially next year. And like I said, I don't know how true this is, or if it's even going to be in the works. Just because we, who knows what can go on during All Star Weekend in the NBA. They were talking about having Steph and Sabrina go back again, but. They were talking about getting the two best shooters for the men and the two best shooters for the women. So for the men's example, if I remember correctly, they said Steph and Damian Lillard. Now, on the female side, obviously Sabrina, the one that caught my attention just because of what she just recently did was Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Now, if if this were to occur and get the – get the the thumbs up for this. I think this will definitely be a really, really fun situation and getting obviously having women coming into all-star and who cares if it's, who cares what people say? Oh, there's, there's people I've seen just random floaters on Twitter, or I should say X, excuse me, that, that make big excuses saying that she shouldn't even be there. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shame on you. I mean, she has every right to be there, whether she's, a fan in the stands or if she's uh, or if she's um, if she's involved in events. I mean, you can say what you want, but that's why you have a burner account on Twitter, dude. Just just keep your mind to yourself and just shut up and let these people have some fun for crying out loud. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I, I love the idea. If, if Caitlin Clark is in the WNBA, no chance she's not there. Uh, yeah, she's, she's got to be one of them. She uh, has I, I even think if you brought in like an uh, an, an old time uh What's her name now? I'm drawing a blank, and I just had it in my brain. Bird. Um, oh, um, she was I don't there. know why I'm, I'm drawing a blank on her first name. Because they uh, both got inducted. Yeah, yeah. She's 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 an, a great WNBA player. Um, and and I'm not one that's going to hate on the WNBA. I just don't think it's as exciting. And and that that's the truth. But if you can give them some sort of bonus for coming to the the All Star Weekend and, and competing like this, or uh, even just getting some recognition to them. Maybe that draws in some sort of a, attention over to it. I don't know. I mean, you, you've got to you've got to try some new tactics if if just doing what you're doing isn't working. Uh, and so I I do like the collaboration. And you you saw where it worked because you took the best shooter in the in the NBA and put a girl up against him that competed very closely with him and not from the 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 three point line that she's used to. Uh, and so I I I, I like the idea. Uh, did you did you get Bird's name? I'm trying to find it right now. Um, um, here, I'll, I'll WNBA bird. <laughs> I don't know. Sue Bird. Uh, I, I, I don't know go. why I was drawing a blank on her first name. I could not think of it. Um, but yeah, I, I just, if you got, if you got like an old, uh, or even a Candace Parker, uh, somebody like that, I think that's another, that's another uh, uh, WNBA yep. player, kind of a, a legend that you could bring in. But, uh, Thoughts? Did you see all of the, the 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 LED floors and stuff that they had? Yes, I did. That was. I think they need to don't do that for regular games, please. No. If you do it for oh, for no. regular games, just keep it a normal court during the game, and use it for like the halftime shows and stuff like that. To, to my knowledge, I, I'm I'm interested to hear what the what the players thought about it. If they thought that it was different to play on, if it was hard to play on, uh, I want to hear that first before we integrate this into anything. But. If if it played if it played well if they felt comfortable playing on it, I think you make that. I mean, why not? Uh, I think it would make stuff like intros where you have their image pop up. You know, like they had like the images like of the yeah. players' faces pop up on the on the court. That's pretty awesome. That was pretty. Uh, cool. You could you could uh, change the three point lines in for WNBA to NBA and, and stuff. So that was that was cool. Uh, and then whenever they did the dunk challenge, you could see the little the trail following trace. them. They had yeah. like uh, they had like fire or stars and stuff like that kind of following them so that was pretty cool uh and then the thing that 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 shocked me so i was looking forward to the skills challenge that's one that i like to watch and you have the arrows you have this led floor that lights up arrows where to run and the guys were still running around the wrong way to start off how do you do that i knew you how do you do that Uh, i I did find it a little unfair that during the entire skill challenge you allowed three guys that are on the same team to be partnered up that seemed a little unfair to me the, the pacers guys but i guess home home court advantage why not i guess because uh, you're in indianapolis but 
uh, that they did they did great. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, uh, and then I'm trying to think of who else. Miles Miles Turner. Um, the the only one that they didn't do well on was the one where they had to shoot in the different spots Into the dips and shots, because yeah. Trey Young just drops every single shot. Oh, uh, that, that his that was his terrible. team was. I forget who else was on his team, but they were just crazy good shooters, and so they were just making everything. Um, so yeah, that was that was just funny to watch. I, I think. The, there was the second guy on the, on the first team. I, I'm forgetting who it was. Uh, he, he came out, ran the wrong way, and the ref had to tell him, go back around, and so he went back around. And then the very next uh, the very next team, I think it was the first guy came out yeah, and went the, the wrong guy. way. What yeah. are you doing? Did you not watch that? So that was another ad- advantage that the Pacers guys got. Not only are you on the same team, you're in your home stadium um, and, and your home, home state, home city. But then on top of that, you got to see everybody else make their mistakes and yeah. then learn from them and, and go out there. And they came through; they they flew it so flew through it so smoothly because oh, yeah. uh, they they came out there, they ran right down, made they, they all three on the on the Pacers team, all three of them made their bucket first shot, uh, their three point bucket. So that yeah. was amazing too. But that was a lot of fun. Um, did, did anything else stand out to you on All Star Weekend? I mean, the Mac dunk McClung, on- Mac I was just gonna say champion. Matt McClung, yeah. the repeat. That was definitely that was definitely fun. Then his first dunk, I thought was way more, and I think it was uh, Kenny, Kenny. Uh, that was that was saying that he he thought that should have been scored higher. I thought that yeah. was the most impressive dunk of the night. Yeah, like I understand you're you're dunking over. Um, I can't remember who he dunked over them. Then obviously let the ball go, grab it, and then yeah. behind the back. I he jumped over Shaq. So he jumped, was, there. We go. He's it a short Shaq. dude. I mean, I'm not not really short. But compared to other guys, he's pretty short. I mean, and he's going and he's jumping over Shaq, who gra- grabs foot the what? ball, tosses it up to himself, catches it, and dunks. I, I thought that was that was creative, and I thought it was pretty awesome. Crazy, yeah. I uh, mean, let's see. It was Jalen Brown. I I didn't. He he had some cool shot, some some cool dunks. To um, me, but it, it just seemed great. like you just needed to give Chung the trophy right then and there. Yeah, yeah. McClung. I I thought he was the obvious winner. Uh, yeah. the Knicks player, uh, I'm drawing a blank there, but he, he didn't do, I, I didn't think he did as much as McClung or Jalen Brown. I felt like that was it. And I don't even remember the fourth guy cause he was so irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, but no, I, I feel like McClung obviously deserved it. Uh, it, it wasn't the most exciting ever, but it was still, I thought it was still a pretty good, pretty good competition. I thought they had a lot of fun out there. They, they, yeah. uh, they, they had, had a, a, a good little competition going between them. Cause I felt yeah. like Jalen Brown and McClung were, were pretty close. Yeah. The the oh uh, the dude with the long hair. Um anyways, yeah, I I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh it, it was a good good NBA All-Star weekend overall. Uh, I thought they did pretty good. I do think again, I think the LED floors added an effect to it that was just hard to beat. Uh and that was really cool. I loved the way that they did it. I think they integrated it. You and I talked about the celebrity game though. Mm-hmm. We were excited for the celebrity game. I usually think that's a lot of fun because you hear a lot of banter back and forth and just kind of fun out there on the court. Yeah, I thought it was really boring. Uh, I didn't recognize a whole lot of the guys out there. Um, yeah, Sad part I, is I was more interested in listening to what uh, Stephen A. Smith and what's his name for the other coach had to say on the sidelines than watching the game itself. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I just. I don't know. I didn't like it at all. I thought no. they did a pretty poor job of picking the celebrities. I don't know how they picked that, but wasn't they a great one this year. Pick. No. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't care for it too much, but. Like everyone can have their own opinion. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. What was your favorite event? Because uh, I'm interested uh, to see if anybody else thought that the celebrity game was great. Maybe your favorite celebrity was in there or something. I could see where that would be a lot of fun, but yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't see a whole lot of star power out there or nothing. No. Uh, it wasn't, I don't know. I, did, I didn't even watch the whole thing. That's how much I cared I about didn't it. Neither. <laughs> but my hype was here for it before it started. Then watching it, it just kept going down and down and down really fast. Same, but, but I, I want to hear from everybody else. What was your favorite event in the NBA All-Star Weekend? Also, do you think that the NBA All-Star Weekend is the best of the major sports? Because personally, I think it's my favorite. Uh, I, I will go out and out there and say it. It's my favorite. I think they do the best with it. But uh, we, we thank you all so much for tuning in. That's all we've got for you. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support the show, you can go down and hit that link down, the, down in the description and join our channel. Become a member today by joining. 
Uh, and that is a great way to help support us. We want to be able to give that back to you and giveaways, give you guys exclusive content. And right now you can get all of our content for, for uh, as an early access. So please go check it out uh, and, and support the show today. You can also go over to rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com and check out our merch. That's also listed down below if you're watching on YouTube. So you should be able to see that down there. Um, but, uh, we, if you're listening on Apple podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. It's the best way to help us on those platforms. And, uh, we just thank you all so much for all the love, all the support guys. We'll see you next time.